Hi, I'm Gilad. I'm a data scientist at SocialFlow in New York City, and I'm here to talk to you about something very, very important that's almost sneaking under our, all of our noses and affecting all of our browsing behavior. So how many of you actually use these automated systems that we see online, like trending topics lists, like what's recommended, like what your friends have read, right? These are apparent everywhere. Everywhere we browse, we get these algorithmically created and curated results. Now, they're doing incredibly important things like telling us whether we should see uh, Dylan's tweet about brushing his teeth or whether we should pay attention to Gary's status update on his baby girl walking. Yes, more baby, more baby images. I know, we all, we all love that. But the more, the more content we have in social media, the harder it is for actually for humans to deal with this, with this amount of data and to filter it down, the closer we get to algorithmic Armageddon. Yes, it's looming and it's near, and actually it's very worrying. I'll tell you why. Like imagine a world where only mechanically created results are fed to you, are fed to your screen. Uh, and so let, let's try to understand what's going on and why it's important. So an algorithm is a finite set of instructions that tries to, to, uh, um, that tries to solve a, um, that tries to solve a problem, right? So we take, um, sorting or we take, uh, um, we take all this data and we can actually observe at a very like, huge scale. We can actually make predictions. We can look at different data points and how they correlate. They're really, really good at scale. And actually, they go really far back in time. So this, this uh, funny contraption was actually used uh, in 1600 BC by the equivalent of uh, data scientists to actually predict uh, uh, and calculate square roots. Right, so the fact that we've been living in harmony together with these algorithms uh, might, be, uh, might tell us that everything's okay, but actually we need to be aware because something's changed. Something recently has changed, and we need to actually, we need to actually observe this. So meet TFIDF. This is our friend. We see TFIDF all across the web. And it actually, it's, it's used all over the place to normalize content. So get rid of the gunk, right? And also, it's used to get rid of this guy here, who's <laughs> apparent in every freaking social site that we have. So we're very, very thankful for TFIDF. And we're thankful that uh, it, it, it actually lets us not see as much Justin Bieber content trending all across. But folks, it comes with a consequence. So Momzilla54 and John, uh, George Reese were wondering, how come Occupy Wall Street had never trended on Twitter, even though it was substantial discussion in different New York City accounts? Right? And when you look at the data, it's very clear that anything that spikes, like what you should know about me, or like Kim Kardashian's wedding, gets uh, uh, to be a trending topic, while, uh, while Occupy Wall Street will never trend. Right? So, there's very, very clear consequences to using TF-IDF because trends such as uh, tax discussions or civil rights will never quite peak as much as Kim Kardashian peaks. <laughs> so data, I mean, we sort of, I'm a data scientist and nobody really knows what they want with these, uh, with these types of algorithms, right? TF-IDF does a great job at getting rid of the comp and uh, presenting just really clean data. Here's another algorithm. This is called, this is our friend SVD. It's made, uh, um, actually made really popular by Amazon's if you like this, then you like that. You all, you all know that and, and see that all across Amazon. Now, I'm okay with getting suggested to buy Barbie dolls whenever I buy a mixer, but suggesting the why we get fat book when I buy electric guitar components is just wrong. All right, SVD, we're on to you. So the, the important thing to realize is that <laughs> algorithms are biased, right? Algorithms come with, with different cultural norms that are encoded in, in the code, in our choices as engineers. I believe we can reach a state, nonviolent, symbiotic, human, algorithmic relations. We can get there, yes. But we have to understand the biases at play. And we have to understand the unintended consequences in the algorithmic choices that we make. We also must, must, must know, how do we, how do we instead of thinking about optimizing for a maximum amount of traffic, how do we actually use human perception 
to gain at, 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 at optimizing for an informed public instead. So thank you, I'm Gilad.